Thank you. And just in case I forget, happy birthday. Um, we will be celebrating our 20th year next year. And thank you so much for um, mentioning Alison. You will see a picture of Alison. And she's, she's always looking down on me. She's a very hard act to follow. And this is the first time I've kind of been let out to officially <laughs> represent the trust as the chair. I wasn't the vice chair, I was a trustee. I was a trustee for a number of years. And when Alison knew what was going to happen, she told me this is what I was going to have to do. So I'm doing it, so thank you. Uh, I'm also very privileged as well, because I didn't realise I was representing Yorkshire. And as some people in the room know, that makes me extremely proud, so thank you for that. So Castleford, where's Castleford? <clears throat> I hope some people will know. That's a beautiful picture of Castleford. So Castleford was actually never, ever a place until the Romans discovered it in the year 74. And the Romans discovered Castleford because it's very much on the waterways, as you can see, and they built a fort. Now, next year in our 20th anniversary, we're hoping not to reveal the fort as such, but we know where the bathhouse is. And it's kind of under a car park, <clears throat> but part of our celebration of our 20th anniversary is to reveal to the people of Castleford some of the heritage that I think they've forgotten in the years that have passed. So we're going from 74 to 2020 and lots in between. So Castleford, if anybody does know it, have heard of it, you might have heard of it in terms of uh, being associated with rugby league. From one extreme to the other, Henry Moore. So Henry Moore, the sculptor, was born there and both of those things will be represented in our 20th birthday. We've also got a very strong industrial heritage. Some of it's very obvious. You know, we had three pits, we had three mines, we had Glass Houghton, we had Ferry Fryston, and we had Welldale. And when my brother told me when he was 16 that he was going to work at Welldale Pit, I said, what are you gonna do? He said, I'm gonna be a blacksmith. And I had a wonderful image because I knew it was the last pit to have pit ponies. So I assumed he was making horseshoes for pit ponies. Little did I know that a blacksmith's role was actually more than that, but it's something I came to learn. And my job now, part of my job, is to tend the Weldale pit wheel because he's now down in Norfolk. So, very much coalfield mining community, but we've also got potteries. <laughs> Yay! And we were given yesterday, part of Alison's legacy, a collection of Dunderdale pottery, which goes back to the 1700s, and again, we're looking to celebrate that. We've also got a glass heritage. We've got a ceramics heritage, as I've mentioned, chemicals and confectionery. And thank you for the reference to licorice, because so many people know about Pontefract. And we're just down the road from Pontefract, but actually when the licorice fields of Pontefract were grown, they were grown in Castleford as well. And we do have licorice growing again now, but in Pontefract. <coughs> we also have Burberries. People forget. Those wonderful raincoats are made in Castleford still today. And chocolates. Kit Kats were made in Castleford. But lots of people were made in Castleford. And my one regret in life is that I wasn't made in Castleford. I was made in Sheffield. But I've, I've been in the, Sheff in the Castleford area since I was six months old. And I grew up with the smell of coal. My dad worked in the tar works, so the smell of tar. I've never been seriously ill in my life, and I put it down to that. And now in Castleford, not only with the smell still the smell of coal, but also we have the smell still of the maltings, which are 200 years old. So these are the kind of things that people don't really think about when they think about Castleford. Our history in terms of Castleford Heritage Trust is very much reflective of the history of the Coalfields Regeneration Trust. So leading up to the millennium, we had a vision, we had a view. The people of Casper got together, and I remember being on the streets. This looks like an artist's impression, and it's not. It's people on a bridge that was built as a result. But when we initially got together as the people of Castleford, <coughs> created a forum. And we were battling against, can you imagine at the time, Castleford is a town near Wakefield, which is a city near Leeds. We were battling with Heritage Lottery Fund to make sure Castleford was on the map. And the Hepworth Gallery was our competition. And the Hepworth Gallery got the funding at the time. But we were determined to do something in Castleford. So the forum was established. And we got as far as putting that clock up outside the Carnegie Library. And when we think, well, we could do that, what more could we do? We've put a clock on a building that people said that that wouldn't happen. We decided this Carnegie Library needed replacing. 
and one of the first big plans was to create a library and a museum. So now there's a small museum within a library in Castleford, a brand new building. But the Castleford Forum project came up with so much more. And with Alison's vision, because Alison was there as well at the time, there was so much on the list of things that the people of Castleford wanted to see in their town. So we started to do some work engaging professionals. So you see there, uh, various activities. Um, if anybody wants to watch the Channel 4 programme again, when Kevin McLeod came to Castleford. Um, for the people of Castleford, for some people, it makes quite difficult viewing because it was quite patronising to the people of Castleford and actually didn't address some of the issues we've heard, particularly in Stoke, we very much resonate with some of the demographics you're talking about. Um, but it put us on the map to a certain extent. And of course, you know, we had people visiting, uh, like Gordon Brown at the time, to see the kind of work we were doing because we were very much engaging the professionals to work with the community and to realise some of our plans. Lots and lots of heritage activities. We really want to celebrate all the heritage of Castleford. It's Roman heritage, it's mining heritage, it's industrial heritage. And we wanted to engage local people. We wanted to make sure that the local people were absolutely at the heart of what we do. So there you can see some really lovely examples of the way that people are engaged. But we were doing this in the community. And as we've heard from people today, sometimes you do need a place. <clears throat> so we started promoting the projects that we're involved with. Uh, of course, Henry Moore features uh, very loudly. We, we, we very much um, welcome the partnership we have with the Henry Moore Foundation and the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, and we look to celebrate the life of Henry Moore in Castleford as part of our anniversary. And then a building became available. And thank you to the Coalfields Regeneration Trust because we were able to open a building and we were able then to extend into a second building and we called it Bridge Arts, which again will come up in relation to the bridge. And we had a space where people could come and have a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and have a chat. We put on exhibitions and the community again got involved. Um, we're still involved with a gentleman called Harry Malkin, who's a very famous artist now, who specialised in uh, using charcoal to portray uh, images of people who worked in the mines. Um, and he had exhibitions there and we still very much um, relate to what we were doing, which was very much a, a workshop and a gallery space. But still we were ambitious. We ran out of space pretty quickly. And then <laughs> Queen's Mill became available. Now, some of you will have heard, I'm sure, of Allinson's, Allinson's flour. It's still produced. You can still buy the, the bread in, in the bread shops. And the Allinson's decided they were moving out. And Alison was very ambitious. She looked at this building. And we looked at this building and thought, what could it be? We didn't want it to be a derelict building. It's right in the middle of town. And lo and behold, a benefactor gave us the money, loaned us the money to purchase the building. So as you can see, that was what the mill was. It was the world's largest stone grinding flour mill. I'm very pleased to say that today we're still milling flour. We had to remove quite a lot of the workings in there but we've left enough of the traditional workings and some of the men that work there have come back and they're still milling the flour we sell the flour and in the tea rooms that we have now in the mill we have a recipe book and the uh, tea rooms use the flour that's milled to make the food so it's a lovely cyclical, pro cyclical process but again it's, it celebrates another part of the heritage so we bought the mill. We didn't buy the trade name, so we couldn't call it Allinson's Mill, because that's what it was known as. So we looked back, it was a pottery, and it was called Queen's, so we called it Queen's Mill again. I have to say, recently, um, sadly after Alison passed away, she was celebrated by being given uh, an award locally uh, for her work uh, in the community, and I had to receive the award because, of course, she wasn't with us, and I couldn't speak, and luckily our MP, um, Yvette Cooper, did the talk speak. She called it Alison's Mill. So I think some, <laughs> somewhere there is a little bit of, of heritage there. She was looking down saying, that's a good name for the mill, but it's actually Queen's Mill. So this is kind of where we're at at the moment, but we have future plans. We've got some spaces that have been renovated. Again, thanks again. We have solar panels on the roof, yay. But... <laughs> We have lots and lots of people. We've already heard about the contribution of people. Alison, this lady over here on the far right. 
And they were our volunteers who really started uh, the work and lots of them still involved with us. We've expanded amazingly the number of volunteers. We now have expanded staff as well. Our Chief Exec Lorna, um, who um, is on that picture as well, does amazing work and um, we are where we are today. So today, um, we are uh, Enterprise Hub. We have businesses trading, we've got a new entrance, um, we have, uh, as you can see, the tea rooms there. We've uh, demolished a kind of part of cabin that it was. We've now got a boat house, we're part of the Canal River Trust and we're hoping to get uh, kayaks and canoes onto the river as part of uh, some charitable work that's being done to join that up. Uh, as well. We have a music teacher in there and we've got a lovely painter pot where children come to revisit the ceramics heritage that we have and they, they relate to the fact that it used to be a pottery and as you can see we have many visitors who come. We've also got craft beer and we have uh, regular beer festivals and we have a gallery because we wanted a gallery, we want to celebrate the fact that Henry Moore is part of our heritage and we have many amazing um, performances. I'd love to see the performance that we saw today, I'd love to see that in that space. Um, but we have exhibitions as well from local artists and also uh, things come along that are related to our heritage. Now this is my passion. My husband is a former uh, woodwork teacher and I've told him that's his next job. Bit extensive. Uh, we've recently excavated the water wheel because it had been cemented in by Allinsons when they automated. So people worry about automation today, but we had an issue when they automated that they cemented in the wonderful water wheel. We would like to recover it, to restore it and to get it working again. There are a number of examples across the country with lottery help that that's been done and we know we can regenerate and generate our own power and not only power for ourselves, but power for the businesses that we're supporting. So that's our next huge, big project. So what does the future hold for Casper Heritage Trust and specifically as well the, business, the, the, the building? So we want to create a resilient organisation. Uh, I've been told not to say sustainable anymore. Resilient organisation <laughs> that makes a difference. It's a place where people come and they come to learn we have the WA operating it out of there as well. We have lots of classes every day, lots of people in the community. But we want people to come and, and, and potentially earn as well because we are a thriving enterprise hub. We've got a growing number of businesses. Every week now we're getting inquiries and we're very fussy about the kind of businesses that we allow into our mill because we want them to be benefiting the community. And we want it to be a place where people feel part of their community as well. And we've just made the decision, my background is in museums and heritage, that we're going to go towards museum accreditation and create a museum um, that really represents the industrial heritage of the area and the social heritage of the area as well. And I'm privileged to um, be going along to Castleford Rugby League, some big supporter, next week to talk about how we can work in partnership with them. So that's the future. Um, we hope we're going to be here for at least another 20 years, but... I as well resonate with everything that everybody else has said that some of the work that we have to do and that we know is necessary, we would prefer not to be doing, but we do a lot of positive things with the community. And recently we've started taking referrals from schools for children who are being inspired by the kind of activities we're doing in the building, which can't be supported in any other way. And for me, that's another thing that's going to inform our future. And I want them to be part of telling us what they want to see not in the mill, but in the town and in the community. So thank you for all your support. Happy birthday, and I hope you'll help us celebrate ours. <laughs>